Mori. Mori. Professor Mori, come quickly. What the deuce do you want, man? Can't you see I'm busy? I know you are, Mori. I wouldn't interrupt you if I didn't think it was important. Well, all right, man. Out with it. What is it? Mori, the workmen have found something. Remarkable. The workmen have found something. That's remarkable. Now, what the devil do you think we're here for except to find something? No, no. This is something you have to see, Mori. Oh, all right. There it is, Mari. It's a hand, a human hand. Well, hand me that trowel. No, that's all right. I can break it away. Yeah, the rock just seems to fall away from it. That's the way they found it. Didn't you, Pablo? He just stepped up here on the promontory and the rock fell away, just popped off like a peanut shell. Say, isn't this the same strata that we took the reptile fossils from? Good Lord, you've been here. You're a geologist, don't you know, man? Of course, I'm just a little excited, Mari, that's all. Mari, do you suppose the whole body's here? How could it be? How could anyone bury a body in this rock? And Mari, this must be a... Oh, will you shut up? Henderson. Yeah. Uh, get them to work removing this thing here, and be sure they get plenty of rock with it. Here. Dominos, we got you. Tell them to start right here. You understand? Take it easy. Now, what's the matter with them? <laughs> They're scared. They think it's a devil. Un diablo. Oh, stupid, idiotic pigs. Well, tell them it's a very dead devil that can't hurt them. El, el diablo muerte. Caroline. Pronto. Pronto. Pablo. Right, John. Oh, no more than a few days. Maury called last night and said they expected to finish up the excavation work sometime today. Oh, did it go well? Well, evidently quite well. Maury seemed very excited. They extracted some beautiful specimens, remarkably well-preserved fossils, especially the Cretaceous. But he thought I should be there for the wind-up of things. Fine field and research man, but he's woefully disinterested in the humdrum. You know, crating, stenciling, cataloging, and the like. Hmm. Probably gives him an excuse not to bathe. Not that I've ever noticed he needed an excuse to avoid that civilized ritual. Now, Ford, he's a dedicated man. Brilliant talents, enormous energy. I wish he'd channel some of those energies into his relationship with his fellow man. Ah, I suspect you've received the Maury treatment, too. Too? Continually. Like, confound it, I've met the fellow a dozen times and have had to introduce myself to him every blasted time. Now, I ask you, John, is Barston such an easily forgotten name? Well, I can't say for the Barston name, but certainly not the Barston physique. Hmm? What do you mean by that? Nothing at all, Ford. Have another drink. I haven't finished this one yet. Fine. You were saying? Um, oh, yes, Maury. Why, do you know that when I speak to him, uh, pleasantly, mind you, the fellow just grunts and looks away. He won't even look at me. Well, diplomacy certainly isn't his long suit. That's true. No, I should think not. Lord knows I've had enough experience dealing with you scientific ducks to, to endure all varieties of abnormal behavior. But this is the first one I've encountered that, that seems to have uh, the lack of a power of speech. Some of you have difficulty communicating, all right, but most of you can muster a hello or a goodbye. Not necessarily at the appropriate time, I might add. Now who's being facetious? 
Well, I only hope some of his bad manners haven't rubbed off on young, uh, what's his name, you know, the fellow that's with him. Randall. Creighton Randall. Yes, Randall, that's it. Now, there's a young man that impressed me. A very bright, very pleasant chap. He's very personable. And he can learn a lot from Maury, especially in the field. I just can't see how you place all that faith in him, John. Confound it, I like a man who can look me dead in the eye. Then you can tell what sort of a fellow that type of man is, but this furtive, shifty-acting type... Is... And that, Mr. Barston, is why you retain me. I do it, then you don't have to. Oh, come on, Ford, don't sit there smoldering. As soon as we get back, I'll start Professor Morey on a crash refresher program on the handling and ego-nourishing of the museum's board of directors. Specifically, it's Chairman, one Ford R. Barston III. Or is it the Ford? Now, confounded, John, now you're making me seem pompous. Ford, you are pompous. I pompous? Well, by Gadfrey, I don't know if I appreciate that. I've never felt that I was overly impressed with my importance. Uh, in fact, if anything, I feel... Are we interrupting anything? Yes, thank heaven. Ford was about to soar into a discourse on one of his many virtues, I think. At least I ask you, how do you tolerate this fellow? I have no choice, Mr. Barston. That's the curse of being a younger sister. I try to bear the stigma as gracefully as possible. Well, I'm glad to see that at last there's someone in the world besides me who can see behind the mask of respectability the scoundrel wears. Good for you, Elise. Assassins, you're both assassins. Ford, have you met my assistant, Paul Benson? I met Mr. Barson at the Marshall Foundation tea. It's good to see you again, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Good to see you, um, Benson. I know his name, Confounder. Yes, good to see you again, Benson. A uh, real pleasure. Everything ready to go, Elise. As you commanded, sire. Bags packed. Here are the plane tickets. And the car outside to take you to the airport. You're a very efficient young lady, Elise. Very efficient. It's a good thing you are, because what are you all staring at me for? Why, you were telling me you were the expert on the vagaries of behavior of scientific ducks like me. Don't you know? We're ready to go. But I haven't finished my drink yet. Generosity is my finest virtue, Ford. You may take it with you. You see what I mean, Elise? I do. He's incorrigible. Ford. Oh, all right, but I won't take your blasted drink with me. Good, it's high in calories anyway. Let's see if I have everything. Papers in the briefcase, airplane tickets in my pocket. Luggage in the car? Come on, the plane leaves at 2.30 and it's 2 right now. Oh, all right, just a minute. Well, confound it, you rushed me through my drink and now you aren't even sure you're ready. Come on, brother dear, you have everything. All right, all right. Oh, Benson. Say, if you get the opportunity down there, see if you could arrange to have this abomination of a museum director deposited in some nice deep hole, will you? <laughs> he needs it. Some sort of a primitive man. It's nothing out of the ordinary, though. You know, mummies are being excavated from this part of the Southwest every day from Indian burial mounds. You know that. Yeah. Well, I'll be back the day after tomorrow morning, as early as possible. Why'd you let him go, Maury? Why not? 
Well, I mean, all the work we've got left, the inventory, the crating. You're afraid you're going to have to do your share of the work now? Hardly fair. Well, Crawford and Benson will be here at the site anyway. The four of us can certainly handle it. Look, we can't know the full significance of this yet, but I don't want to run the risk of those workmen babbling about it in town. You heard them. Un diablo, a devil. Those superstitious fools. Does it really matter if they do? Are you questioning my decision? No. Then do me a favor and shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. What time are we to meet their plane? My watch is stopped. What time do you have? It's 4.15. Yeah, well, I'd better go then. The plane's due at 5.30. Don't you want me to go too? Well, of course not. We can't leave this thing unguarded. You'd better stay here. Oh, you're right. Maury, won't Crawford be elated when he sees our discovery? Yes, I'm sure he will. But while I'm gone, Randall, uh, why don't you see if you can remove some more of this rock? It doesn't seem to be adhering to the flesh. Shouldn't be too difficult. Here. It's like this. You get a bit of light. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Good. Well, I'd better go. Yes, you'd better. I'll see you all later. Dr. Crawford, Benson, over here. Good to see you. I'm sorry our plane was late. We keep you waiting long. Oh, not at all, not at all. Good to see you, Doctor. Benson, Bernie? Say, this Texas sun must really agree with you. You're as brown as a berry. <laughs> yes, well, there you are. Oh, I got you a uh, motel on the edge of town. There's a good restaurant there, as good as any in town. Well, I thought we were going to stay at the site, Bernie. Well, uh, you could, but uh, well, we've been roughing it pretty much recently. You know, small tents, a couple of cots, and it'll be dark before long. Oh, I uh, thought maybe after your long trip you'd like a little more comfort than our camp affords. I can pick you up first thing in the morning. Well, perhaps you're right. Randall stay at the site? Yes, I... Uh, he thought it'd be best. Guarding the treasures, huh? <laughs> yes, you might say that. I think you're going to be very impressed with the specimen, Doctor. Well, I'm sure I will, Bernie, but I must confess I was looking forward to seeing them this evening. Well, you uh, forced me to admit something, Doctor. Uh, you know me. I've kept myself and Randall so busy with the excavating that uh, I'm afraid the details, the cataloging, is pretty much of a mess. Matter of fact, that's why Randall stayed, to try to get some order into it. I know, I know, Doctor. You've told me before. Detail work certainly isn't my strong point. True enough, Bernie, but you know that makes no difference to us. Please, Doctor, indulge me in this. I desperately want you both to be impressed. No, I have to admit, a good meal and a night's sleep sounds just fine to me. Let's go pick up the luggage. Benson and Crawford. Uh, they decided to stay in town. Tired, I guess. I'll pick them up in the morning. You've made good progress. Yes, you were right. The shale literally falls away from it. Well, that's odd. I would have thought Crawford would have been hard to restrain after you told him about finding the body. Oh. Oh, you got any coffee made? I haven't eaten yet. On the camp stove. You did tell him, didn't you? No. For God's sake, why not? Oh, I uh, wanted to surprise him. I wanted him to see the body after we had it completely extricated. And we'd better get at it if we're going to get it done. What are you staring at me for? Nothing, Mari. Nothing at all. I, I just can't figure you out. I would have been bursting to tell Crawford about our discovery if I were you. Fortunately for me, you're not. Now let's get to work. say exactly. The scintillometer tells us that according to the carbon atom deterioration, his age is in excess of 
several million years. Now, couple that with the strata in which we found him, and I'd say, oh, 60 million years. 60 million? Fantastic. But how? Did that charred bit of flesh we took from the scalp been burned at a later date? <laughs> Through 12 feet of shale? Then he must be that old Marty. I checked the scintillometer only yesterday, and it's working perfectly. Imagine a man, a perfect Neanderthal type, living right in the middle of the reptilian age. Well, you know what this means? This fellow knocks every accepted evolutionary theory into a cocked hat. I'm well aware of it. But what could have preserved a body like this? Uh, the hair, the sinew. Look, there's even whisker stubble on the chin. Chemicals in the shale, I'd imagine. What about this laceration on the skull cap? Well, I thought at first he must have struck his head, or been struck on the head. But uh, that charred flesh around the wound would seem to indicate otherwise. And uh, notice the constriction of the muscles in the extremities, as though he sustained some uh, severe electrical shock. Now, this is only a guess, but it could be that he was caught out in some primordial thunderstorm and was struck by a bolt of lightning right here on the top of his head. Electrocuted? That must be it, Mar. He was electrocuted, and somehow, only God knows, the body remained preserved. Now, judging from the shell crayfish that we took from the rock, he must have fallen into a swamp, and the body remained intact. Perfectly intact. been a good part of the night. It's 2.15. Yes, we'd better get some sleep. I promised Crawford we'd pick them up early this morning. You know, I can hardly wait for Dr. Crawford's reaction when he sees our reptile man. He's not going to see him. What do you mean, he's not going to see him? Exactly that. We're not going to tell him we've found him. Why, Murray? Why? Good Lord, man. Don't you grasp the significance of this? That corpse is going to revise all scientific thinking as to man's first hour on the evolutionary timetable. Darwin be damned, Randall. This is going to be the new anthropology. Oh, of course I get the significance of it, Murray. But why keep it a secret? You're a naive fool, Randall. This thing's importance demands more than it's gathering dust in some dark museum alcove. It's worth a fortune. How? Exhibit it. Exhibit it. Like a carnival freak? The, the Javanese merman and a bottle of alcohol, the two-headed boy? Is that what you want? We're scientists, Maury, not cheap con men. Besides, it's not ours to do with what we want. We found it, didn't we? We broke our backs these months in that abominable heat. We've earned it, Randall. Well, you can count me out. I want no part of it. What, uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to tell Dr. Crawford about this conversation. But I am going to tell him that we found it. No, you're not, Randall. I'm not. Listen. I've put up with you these months because you're the head of this expedition, but not any longer. I'm sick of your tin god tactics, Maury. I'm fed up right to here. You're not roping me into this insane plot, and you're not telling me what to do. I think you will, Randall. You see, I know about that incident in California, the affair with the Morrison girl. How did you find out? So I make it my business to find out as much as possible about the museum personnel. Well, go ahead and tell Dr. Crawford if you want to. I don't think he'd let it jeopardize my position now. Oh, of course not. Not dear understanding, Dr. Crawford. But I doubt if the board of directors would be as uh, understanding of your uh, indiscretion, shall we call it, if they were to find out. Museum reputation, you know. All right, Murray. Have it your own way. Don't worry, Randall. I've got it all planned out. Now, we crate up the body before I pick up Crawford. Well, we think it as tools or something on the inventory list. Now. I know Crawford. He'll be so engrossed in his fossil that he won't pay any attention at all. Then, when we get back to Farnfield, we make sure that we drop it off at the warehouse unopened. Then what? Then, a little later, you and I take a field trip on our own. And that's when we discover it. No museum affiliations, all on our own. I don't know. It'll work, Randall. And you and I are going to make the greatest scientific discovery in history. Just the two of us. Song there, Professor. There's going to be three of us. Well, I guess that's everything except for the body and the specimen. Well, I'd better be going. Henderson, 
help uh, Randall crate up the body, will you? Unless that runs contrary to your newly acquired status. <laughs> well, I'm just along for the ride. You can call the shots. You sure you label that uh, crate tool? I will. Walk to the car with me. Looks like rain filling up up there. Well, be sure you've got the tarp on tight. Look, do you have a gun? Well, what in the world for? Here. Take this. Henderson's up to something. He's been acting too cooperatively. You know, uh, the stakes are too high in this for him to be botched up by him. So take this and put it in your shirt and use it if you have to. Go ahead, take it. Put it in your shirt. It won't burn you. Be sure you get that body crated up. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes, I heard. All right, I'll be back by noon. It's been torn down. It looks like a tornado has come through here. Randall! Randall! From the morning! There's someone over there. suffering from shock. We've got to get him to a doctor right away. Clayton, come on. Clayton, come with us. Get away from me. Don't come near me. It's gotta be buried. You hear me? Marty, you fine fool. You should have known. Shut right. up and listen. You saw Henderson, didn't you? That's what it can do, Marty. That's what it can do. What does he mean, it? 
Randall, did you kill Henderson? No, you idiot. Didn't you hear me? Get this. We never should have taken it from the Earth, Mari. It's against nature. We've got to bury it again, Mari. God, we don't. It'll kill us all. We've got to bury it, Mari. Bury it deep. What's he talking about? Randall, listen to me. Randall, what did you do with the corpse? Mari, don't you understand? It's got to be buried. It did it. It did it. You think I'm crazy, don't you? You've got to believe me, Murray. It's got to be buried. Where is the body? Over there, where he fell. Is that what Randall was talking about? Yes. Good Lord, Bernie, it looks like a... Go oh, ahead, say it. You'd be right. It's the body of a prehistoric man. And fantastic as it seems, we took it from the same strata as the reptile boat. He's dead now. And we've got to get it back in the ground, do you hear? We will, Randall, we will. But you need medical attention. Oh, no, no, it's got to be buried. I promise you, Randall, we will bury it. Maury and I will bury it for you, I promise. Now, will you go to town with Paul, please? Good. And Paul, get in touch with the sheriff as soon as you get to town. All right. Come on, Creighton. They'll take care of it. Come on. You said you removed this corpse from the... Same deposit as the dinosaur fossils, Maury. Are you suggesting that this body is that old? I'm not suggesting anything, Doctor. I'm stating a fact. Now, look here. You see that ruptured flesh on the cranium? Yeah. The charred area? Well, Randall and I ran carbon-14 tests on a bit of it. The atomic disintegration indicates its age in excess of several million years. Impossible. Improbable. Not impossible, Doctor. Could there have been a malfunction in the cinnamon? No, no, no. We checked it thoroughly. And look here, Doctor. He's a comparatively advanced representative of human revolution. Or have noticed the location of where the spine joins the skull. The pronounced evidence of a chin. Near Neanderthal type. Yes, that's what I thought. But why? Why is the corpse in such an amazingly excellent state of preservation? Anything that ancient should be a mass of broken, petrified bones. And if not that, at least mummified. Why, these muscles are supple. Its skin is spongy, almost like living tissue. You know, there must have been some chemical properties of the shale that... Well, that's odd. Yes, most odd. No, I mean, when we discovered this body yesterday, the limbs were rigid. Those muscles were all constricted. But now they're completely relaxed. You found it yesterday? Well, undoubtedly, the body is starting to deteriorate. We should get it into some sort of refrigeration as soon as possible. Yes, by all means. It hasn't lain down here since yesterday, has it? Of course not. We took it to the tent just as soon as we had it free from the rock strata. Matter of fact, we spent the better part of last night removing the shale from around it. No, Randall must have dragged it down here after he went berserk and killed Henderson. If he killed Henderson. We'd better get it out of the sun. Give me a hand and we'll put it in the back of the station wagon. One of the most bizarre crime stories in Las Mesas County history reached a climax today when a jury of eight men and four women found scientist Creighton Randall guilty of murder in the first degree. Randall had been accused of the shovel slaying of Cletus Henderson local labor contractor who had been employed by a field party of the Parnfield Museum of Natural History. Randall was a member of that party. The grisly murder followed the momentous discovery of the completely intact body of a prehistoric man. Well, according to that psychiatrist that the board appointed, this Randall fella showed a... Now, let's see. What did he call it? A pronounced psychopathic personality. Yeah, that's it, a psychopathic personality. Then you believe that Randall actually did kill Henderson, Sheriff? Oh, there ain't no doubt of it, Doctor. Used that sharpshooter on him. At times, he seems most rational. When he is, he keeps insisting that that body they discovered came to life to kill Henderson. Yes, and he becomes almost uh, panicky when he senses we didn't rebury it. Now, I don't know much about this, but in that psychiatrist's testimony, he said it was typical, having an imaginary person guilty of a crime that he committed. Now, it seems to me that Randall had his tailor-made in this thing you dug up. The board recommended that he be committed to a state institution for the criminally insane. Will that be here? No, sir. I think arrangements are being made to send him back near his home. Good, good. You have our address, Sheriff, if you need us again. Yeah, but I don't think we will. Uh, say, where's that other feller, Maury? He's at the freight office making arrangements for the shipment of our specimens. However, we are going to fly the prehistoric body to the museum. Can't afford to waste time. Let me ask you something, Doctor. It ain't none of my business, but is this body you dug up that all-fired important? 
Well, the mere fact that the flesh is so well preserved is remarkable in itself. But if its age is confirmed as being contemporary with the dinosaurs, it'll be a most momentous discovery. By the way, Sheriff, I'd like to thank you for clearing our crates for shipment so quickly. We appreciate that. Why, there wasn't no need holding them. Uh, say, that caveman. <laughs> you know, that doggone thing looked as much like a monkey as it did a man. Sheriff, you come to field sometime, and I'll show you some reconstructions that make this fellow look ultra-modern by comparison. Uh-uh. That one's enough for this old boy. Sheriff, I wonder if I could speak with Randall before we leave. Well, uh, I don't know. He ain't making much sense. We were very close friends. Well, I guess it's all right. He's in room 302. So, you just give this to the guard outside his door there, and he'll let you in. But listen, if that feller gets violent, you yell for him. You understand? I shouldn't be letting you do this in the first place. Well, thank you, Sheriff. It's quite right. all right. Quite yeah, all I think right. everything will be all right. I hope you'll be all right. Sure you will, too. You've been most cooperative, Sheriff. Thank you very much. Glad to be able to help you fellas, Doctor. Come back. I'll meet you at the car in about 10 minutes, Doctor. Fine, Paul. I'll be right outside if you need me. I'll knock. Crazy. It's Paul. Paul. Oh, they buried it yet? Yes. Yes, it's buried. Thank God. It could kill again. Look, Creighton, can you tell me more about this thing killing Henderson? Why? You don't believe me, do you? Of course I believe you. Watch Maury. Maury? You don't know about Maury. Nobody does. But I do. Yes. Yes, I will. Now, Tell me how that corpse could have killed Henderson. The lightning. It's got to be buried before it storms again. It, it fades on the lightning. It, it's its life. Please, Paul, bury it. It is buried. No. Let it get Mari first. That despicable vermin. Let him steal it like he planned to do. Then let it get Mari like it got Henderson. Paul. It was awful. Paul. It's got to be buried, Paul. It's got to be buried. Yes, Craig. You lie there and rest. We'll take care of it. <laughs> Down here, Paul. I thought you were in the car. Oh, my curiosity got the best of me. Tell me, do you believe there's more to this story than we know? No, I suppose not. But I'm not sold on that psychiatrist's conclusions. I find it hard to believe that Randall was capable of committing such an atrocious crime, no matter what his mental state. Well, who then? You certainly don't think that body came to life and did it. At this stage, I just don't know, Doctor. Could Maury have done it before he came to pick us up? No. The time of death set by the coroner eliminates that possibility. It's just that, well, at the time we found Randall, he seemed more hysterical than insane. Though he'd just been confronted with some indescribable horror. Is he more rational now? No, no, not really. One thing for certain, though, he despises Maury. He implied he was planning to steal the body. Good heavens, what for? To start his own museum? As I said, he wasn't rational. By George, I just can't get over your finding this, uh, what do you call this thing? Oh, we haven't even taken time to think about a name for it yet. Newspaper boys have come up with some colorful ones, though. What was that one in this morning's paper release? Let's see. Sorry a man makes monkey out of evolution. Did you see tonight? Which came first, the monkey or the man? Ouch! That should make some of your colleagues bristle, John. You think it hasn't already? Why, no less than ten of our leading paleontologists have demanded that I prove its age. You are certain, aren't you? 
Have you no faith in us, Ford? Well, yes, but I... Well, put your mind at ease. We are, sure. Maury and Benson and I have been burning the midnight oil for the past three weeks just to be certain. And every possible test has pointed to one hard fact. That body is definitely many millions of years old. Now, how do you explain a man who should have lived uh, how many years ago? 50, 60,000? Yes, how do you explain his being contemporary with the dinosaurs? Now, that's the question we were afraid you'd ask. We don't explain it. How could we? Why don't you all continue this discussion in the living room while Grace and I clear the table? If that body is so blasted old, how come it's so well preserved? Oh, perhaps a fortunate combination of chemicals in the swamp into which it had fallen may account for it. However, Bernie has a more imaginative theory. Hmm. What's that? Bernie? Well, I agree in part with Dr. Crawford. That's generous. Ford. Go ahead, Bernie. As I said, I agree in part. But the chemicals would have done little more than uh, mummify the body. No, something else was needed to preserve it in the state in which we found it. Now, we know that uh, he'd been struck by lightning, electrocuted. So I hypothesize that this severe jolt of electricity had uh, halted the bodily processes, causing them to immediately cease to function as living matter, and arresting all cellular deterioration as well. Holding them static, isn't that correct, Bernie? Yes, static. You believe this thing exists in a state of suspended animation? In a sense, yes. And that it actually isn't dead? Not in the conventional sense of the word, no. Nonsense. Utter nonsense. Don't label it nonsense, Ford. We have to consider any theory that has a basis in fact. Confound it, John. Are you letting this odd ball rub off on you? You insufferable boor. By what right do you pass judgment on me? Bernie, stop it. You keep out of this, Crawford. You are through with this museum, Maury, and by heaven, I'll make sure you never find a place in any other. Cool down, both of you. Now, Bernie, I'm sure that Ford didn't mean what he said in the way you took it. I'll be hanged if I didn't. The confounded man's been a misfit ever since he joined us. Well, that's a situation I intend to rectify at once. I'm sorry it turned out this way, Dr. Crawford. Don't be hasty, Bernie. We'll talk about this in the morning. No, I'm going by the museum and pick up my effects tonight. Well, I found it is two cents. Congratulations, Ford. You were most diplomatic. Did you expect me to sit there and take his insult? I expected you to keep an open mind to any sincerely advanced theory, whether you thought he was wrong or not. Maury's had an exhausting three months of work, Ford, and to my way of thinking, he had far more legitimate excuse for his irritability than you. Well, how could you expect any rational person to sit there without saying a word while some lunatic spins a cockeyed yarn about that thing being buried, neither dead nor alive, for 60 million years? Could you prove it otherwise? Now, be honest, Ford. Had I advanced that theory, your reaction to it would have been far different, wouldn't it? Well, I... Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Oh, all right. I'll make it a point to apologize to the confounded... Uh, to the fellow in the morning. I'm afraid that'll be too late. I think we should follow him to the museum tonight. No, uh, you go. I'll see him in the morning. I, I just couldn't right now, John. Let me cool down a little. As you wish. Shall we go, Paul? Certainly. Yes, well, I'll, I'll be running along. I'll see him first thing in the morning. Oh, Elise, thank you for your hospitality. The dinner was delicious. Our pleasure, Mr. Bryson. Uh, John, uh, sorry about the, uh, I, well, good night. What in the world happened? Mr. Barson and Maury crossed swords. We'd better go too, Paul. We want to catch him before he leaves the museum. I'll go out and bring the car around. All right, I'll be right out, Doctor. Good night, darling. Aren't you coming back with John for nightcap? You'd rather I would? Yes. This past few weeks have been so horrible for all of us. I'd like to spend just a little time like we used to, to sit and talk. It seems there hasn't been a word exchanged between any of us unless it pertains to that dreadful corpse of poor Creighton. You're right, Elise. I'll be right back. There's John now. I'll see you later.
time you got caught out in the rain tonight, didn't you, Professor? Yes, I did. It's regular downpour. Gonna do a little night work tonight? Yes, Charlie. Well, the lights are all off down there. You want me to come with you and turn them on for you? No, I can manage. Well, if you need old Charlie, I'll be down in the furnace room. Just holler. By gum, a strange fella, that fella. <laughs> You have 24 hour service. Well, all right then. I need a truck at once. What? Two hours? Why two hours? Oh, damn, the storm. What? Well, when? Now, look, I'll give you double the usual charge. What? Hello? Hello? Charlie? Dr. Crawford? Paul? Well, speak up, man. What is it? Oh, no! No! Incredible, Doctor? Well, the flesh hadn't deteriorated, and the uh, intestines, the vital organs, are intact. Then it could be. Oh, I suppose so. Why? What do you think, Paul? Well, this may sound crazy, but I don't think Creighton killed Henderson. Why? I believe the corpse and the Anderson did. Good Lord, how? Well, I don't know exactly. Perhaps Randall was right. Lightning. He seemed terrified that the storm would break before we buried the corpse. Now, if the condition had been brought about by lightning, then it could be that it's regenerated by it. What do you think? Would this be possible? I don't know, Paul. I just don't know. Charlie, let's be down in the basement. Do you have your keys, Paul? 
Probably in his office. Drag Maury's body through there. What do we do now? Follow that trail of blood. We've got to find Maury. Hadn't better go for the police? No, I think we'd better try to find Maury first. Then you can go for the police. Me? Hadn't we both better go? No, I think one of us should stay here and try to keep that thing in the building. The service door is the only one that's unlocked, isn't it, Paul? Yes, as far as I know. But, Doctor, one of us is no match for that thing. This gun is our equalizer, Paul. Let's lock the service door, then pick up that blood trail. I'm sure it'll lead us to Maury. Pray God he's dead. We'd better not separate till then. This beast kills like a wild animal, but it is human. And as such, it'll have a certain degree of predatory intelligence. Well, the lights are gone. Is Charlie's flashlight working? Looks all right here, Doctor. That should do. Let's pick up the trail again. From the looks of this, Maury doesn't stand a prayer. Sound of the gun seemed to frighten him. Let's go for the police. Rain stop.
it's all right. Take it easy now. Try to tell us what happened. A man with a most horrible crazy in his arm. <laughs> That's a boyfriend over here. Skull crush. Look here. These that thing's footprints? Yes, this would be. They lead up over the woods over here. Another patrol car? That you must have slim down, Judith. Do you think that thing's headed back to the museum? I would imagine so, yes. Raj, go up and tell. Wait a minute. Here he comes now. Did the dispatcher tell you what you're dealing with? Yeah, as much as he knew. All right, get back up on that road and take that girl back to town and hop over to the Parn Field Museum just as fast as that car takes you. Go on to the service door. It's unlocked. Raj, you come with me. We're going to track that thing back through the woods right now. We'll go with you. All right. Here. You know how to use it? Raj, give me your shotgun. Everybody ready? Let's move out. See those wounds in his chest? Those are the ones I fired into him earlier. But we've got to get at least away from it. I'll take care of that. Looks like you're wrong, Doctor. It is dying. I'll finish it off. No, wait. You'll only mutilate the body. If he's not dying, what's wrong with him? Well, we know the electrical storm reanimated him, Paul. Now I believe the energy he received is just about dissipated. Wait just a moment, officer. We'll be able to take him without resistance.
I've got an idea. I don't understand. The modern weapons were useless against it, Paul. It was by a bizarre trick of nature that it could even exist in our time. And equally bizarre, it could only be destroyed by something from its own time. The dinosaur bones. 